Good morning, everyone. My name is Daniel Malloy, and I'm the CEO of the Alberta Retired Teachers Association. I want to thank you for joining us today for this seminar presented by our Pension and Financial Wellness Committee. ARTA is pleased to offer a series of financial wellness seminars this month to create an opportunity for education on topics specific to retiree financial wellness. Since ARTA was formed in 1963, we have focused on supporting our members in an engaged and active lifestyle in retirement. Our holistic approach includes one of the best retiree plans in the country, as well as many other additional programs and services, including our discount programs, physical wellness events, social opportunities offered through our regional branches, scholarships for family members, and of course, seminars like this one. ARDA also serves as an advocate for teachers and retiring. Using our collective voice to draw attention to the issues that matter most to you, our members, issues like ATRF and teacher's pension, the Seniors Drug Plan, the Choice in Education Act, and most recently, curriculum development. There are many different factors that allow ARTA to maintain such a wide reach, but in the end, it all boils down to our organization's financial wellness and sustainability. As a not-for-profit organization, we take any surpluses we generate and put them right back into the benefits plan. And because we were created by teachers for teachers and like-minded professionals, we remain dedicated to retirees. 2021 has been a year of significant change for ARTA as we begin to self-administrate our own benefits plan. While there has been hurdles to overcome in this transition, our dedicated staff have been working tirelessly to connect with each member and resolve independent, unique issues. While the initial transition is not as smooth as we had hoped, we know that the long-term benefits of self-administration will be worth these initial frustrations. One of which is increased financial sustainability and major plan improvements coming this November. We thank you for your continued support of ARDA. With that, I'll pass things off to ARDA's Chief Financial Officer, Scott Twaniak. Thank you, Daniel. Good morning, all, and welcome to ARDA's uh, inaugural uh, video presentation of our Financial Wellness Seminar. ARDA is excited to host some very informative speakers over the next couple of weeks. I'm looking quite forward to it. Uh, as Daniel mentioned, my name is Scott Twaniak. I'm the CFO for ARDA. I'm joined today by Leo Riche, who is the chair of ARDA's Pension and Financial Wellness Committee. Uh, a number of our pension, pension and Financial Wellness Committee members, Blair, Low Blair Lowry, Sheila McKay, Ray Hoger, ARDA's past president, Marilyn Bossert, and by lease assistants, our executive administrative assistant. As you may have realized by now, since you can't hear yourself, We've disabled attendee video and audio capability. <clears throat> this ensures a quality experience for all participants by limiting the web streaming. It also allows us to record this webinar for future use without breaching your privacy. With your audio muted, we encourage you to use the question and answer feature found at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions. You can submit questions publicly so that all attendees can see them, or you can submit them privately and only artist staff and the, and the presenter will be able to see them. Our team or the speaker will respond to your questions throughout the webinar or toward the very end. So moving on to our speaker intro, and now that we have all the housekeeping matters completed, I'd like to welcome today's speaker, Randy Olson. He's the president of Capital Estate Planning. Randy's the founder and for the past 30 years has been called on as a featured speaker to ATA retirement sessions has worked with teachers across Alberta help to help plan for their future. Capital Estate Planning is the provider of the ATA Voluntary Benefits Program, a suite of financial and insurance solutions built specifically for the needs of teachers and retired teachers across the province. Randy is joined by his colleague, Rick Harcourt, also of Capital Estate Planning. And today, Randy will be sharing a presentation on financial wellness in retirement. Uh, with that, I will turn the presentation over to Randy. Well, thank you, Scott. Welcome to an Alberta Blue Sky Day, everybody. Uh, it's, it's nice and sunny in my part of the world. Uh, just uh, We had three inches of snow two days ago, so I don't know how uh, April showers bring May flowers rhymes with snow, but uh, my, my, my pet geese had a little bit of a problem. So, <laughs> so as Scott has indicated, we're, we're very proud to be 
one of the, the, the lead talks for you. And uh, this is so important to all of you. It's such a treat, I think, to be able to get a group together like we have today, because everybody's sort of in the same mode. We're all sort of in that retirement mode. Oftentimes we're speaking at larger teachers conferences and we have beginning teachers as well as retired teachers there. So this is fantastic to be able to focus today on things. I've got a lot of tools and I just want to share with you today. Um, we've all spent a great deal of time at home the last little while. And our staff at Capital have been constantly looking for the best way to share ideas with all of you. Because of you and your association and a large group of teachers and support staff and the retired teachers, we've worked very hard to try to connect with everybody. So we're hoping that our Capital Connects content is of value and help to each of you today and uh, with your families as well. So onwards and upwards, let's get started for you. So the first question that generally comes up is, who are we, you guys? Um, uh, thank you, Dan and Scott. You give us a little bit of introduction already. Uh, we've had a long, strong relationship with the ATA, you folks. We've been around for 35 years with the ATA, and we are a totally independent financial services firm. We work with all the banks, all the pension companies, uh, insurance firms, mutual fund companies, investment managers. The voluntary benefit program has really grown over the last 10, 15 years. Um, as Dan indicated, we have a whole range of products and services to basically provide you with assistance and help and advice going along. Many, many years ago, some of you may remember a guy by the name of Julius Buski and Charles Hyman, and I relied on them a great deal in the beginning years for advice and direction. And I always remember Julius coming to me, he says, Randy, let me explain something to you. Uh, most teachers have never left school. They went from junior high to high school, into university, into the classroom, and now into retirement. And here we are, Retirement 101, going all over again, and it's a whole new university for you. And that's one of the things I've really recognized over the years, that we all have to depend on one another and, and look for each other to help, because whether it's a dental issue or getting a car fixed, we have to depend on people to have a little bit of advice going forward for us. So what the ATA asked for is they needed somebody that was independent and had a provincial scope to be able to give you sort of a wide range of options. I understand we have people from all the problems today, so that's fantastic. We think words are very important in our business, and I use words like consistent, security, diversified, accountable. We embrace all those words, and I think I want to focus on accountable for all of you because one of the things that we're most proud of is we report to the Pension Benefits Committee. Leo was involved in it for many years as well, twice a year now. It's not easy to sit and answer questions for 20 of your very learned associates. It's a little bit daunting sometimes, but you know, I don't really consider that a challenge. It's more of a privilege, you guys, because it gives us so much credibility talking to you today, knowing that we're accountable to your association and answering questions. And somebody's often said to me, when I'm 84, who's minding the store? And that's one of the things we're gonna to try to provide with you over many, many years is consistency going forward. One of the things I've always challenged about is I just want to make sure that you understand what peace of mind is all about. Those deck chairs, they could be in your backyard, they could be overlooking the river valley, they could be sitting at your lake, or just enjoying a primitive park somewhere. I just want you to be able to, at the end of today's session, I'm hoping to be able to provide you some scope as to how to make those chairs really relaxing going forward. Spend some time with your family and friends, and I'd like to share one quick story with you. I had my grandkids over, I have four of them now, two little girls and two little guys, they're all between six and 11. Had them over for an Easter egg hunt, it was just mayhem in the Olson's backyard. And one of my little grandsons, his mom and dad bought him a fishing boat a while ago. And he's so excited to get this boat in the water. He says, Grandpa, we have to turn this boat over, it's sitting in the middle of our yard. He says, I have to turn this boat over, I wanna sit in it with you. So here's this little 11 year old guy saying, no Grandpa, here I am, uh, where do we put the life jackets? Where should I put the anchor? Where should I hold my fishing rods? And Grandpa, when I take you for the first ride, where are you going to sit? And we sat there for half an hour. It doesn't get any better than that, guys. And I realized very quickly, we can learn a lot from these little people going forward. So I just hope that through all this, that we can look each other in that chair and say, have we got things under control? And are we at peace of mind? And can we enjoy our life going forward? I love to travel, everyone. And one of the things that I put this picture, this is an actual uh, clip out of the Blue Planet. And when we started looking at the Earth from a distance, from the space shuttle, from the space station, all of a sudden we begin to realize that, you know, we started to see the rainforest issues, we started to see the melting ice caps, the ozone layer. 
And I guess my attempt today is to help you take the same step back and say, look at the big picture, get away from our daily activities, and how can we proceed going forward, and what can we learn in all of this going forward? Well, the first thing we learn is that retirement has changed. This picture has taken one or two generations ago, and you know, people didn't have to think about retirement planning in those years because most people didn't live more than five years. And so all of a sudden you realize that, my goodness, both my grandpas passed away before they were 65. And so nowadays, it's quite a whole different picture because you look at it now, we are leading much more active lives. We're teaching our kids and grandkids. We're nurturing them. The statistics tell us that most of us are probably going to see age 90 plus, especially as a couple. One of you are probably going to see 90, 95. So you begin to realize that when we retire in our 60s, many of you have options at 55 and 60. But my goodness, we still have 30 years to go. So those are the things we have to talk about going forward. And it's a pretty special world that they're going. My wife loves Mike Holmes. She thinks I can do everything in the house in an hour and get it all fixed up and completed. And so today I wanted to do a, take a Mike Holmes or a Property Brothers approach for all of you and say, here's what a retirement home looks like. And here's the things that we have to sort of keep looked after, I guess, in our, in our construction of our home. Longevity, I'm gonna be touching each one of these through our session this morning. Longevity, income, volatility in the market, estate planning, inflation, and good grief, we all have to worry about taxes as well. So I'm gonna to touch on each of those going through it all to sort of show you where they're important and how they can fit in for you. But before I start that, I just want to clarify our role at Capital and what we try to do. Our whole focus at our company over the last 35 years is to work with teachers and retired teachers. My focus is to give you financial independence, make sure you're okay, make sure you've got money for groceries, you can travel, enjoy your assets where you're healthy each other. The whole focus is to making sure that you're secure and stable in your life and be able to sit in those chairs and relax. If you have the ability, and goodness hope most of us should have, help your kids out, help your grandkids and kids. You know, those little guys, both my, my girls married fantastic guys. They're all very secure in their, in their incomes. But I look at my little people in, the, in my family and how are they going to get money for university? How are they going to buy their first home? So there's things that grandmas and grandpas can do to help out in that family legacy going forward and give them some assistance. And for the few of us that have the ability to sort of look beyond that, and I shouldn't say a few, most of us should be able to because we have good pensions and had good incomes. Goodness, there's a lot of people that need our help, folks. And so we're going to talk a little bit about charitable giving today as well. And how it can work in best for you from a financial planning perspective. This is probably pretty familiar to all of you. We've all been building and working. All of you have worked all your lives, pushing that snowball up that hill. You finally got to the point where you get in the requirement prep zone. You get to the retirement area. And all of a sudden, the toboggan and the snowball is a lot easier to push because now it's going downhill. We've got things like lifestyle needs, health needs, and basic living needs in retirement. So I'm going to focus on some of those today and to give you some insight and some tools and, and, and products that could probably help you a great deal. And of course, at the end of it all is the legacy approach as well. One of my rules is uh, the 40-70 rule. And I tell you folks, as we get into our retirement, planning should be starting when your adult kids are 40 and your parents are 70, no later than that. And start talking to your kids. It's a very, very hard story for me to tell you, but I'm going to share this with you because it's very meaningful today. I grew up in a farm east of Edmonton. My mom and dad were very successful farmers all their lives. My mom was in getting her hair done in Fort Saskatchewan years ago, and she was making conversation with the hairdresser, and she said, well, we're going to see our accountant today. We sold a piece of property. The hairdresser gave my mom my business card and said, you should go see these people. They're good at what they do. My mom said, good grief, that's my son. And Gloria says, Jean, why aren't you talking to Randy? Like, why are you going to an accountant? My mom got out and got into the car and said, Gordon, we're going to see Randy. He's not a little boy anymore. In the succeeding months, we got to my mom and dad's will straightened around. We had their assets all organized. The farm was set up on a proper basis for them. My dad died of cancer eight years after that hair appointment. And it gives me shivers telling you that because if it hadn't been for that hair appointment, my own family would have been disarray. So please folks, talk to your kids and explain to them what you're doing, outline your plans with them and share things with them going forward because in the end, they'll be grateful and it sure takes the pressure off of you. One of the things I often talk about is consolidate your possessions and your paperwork, everybody. You know, go through your precious things and say, if this is a, a, a cheese dish for my great grandma, 
explain that to your granddaughter and give it to her. Go through your possessions and go through the things that you can look down the road and say, give it to the kids and tell them the story while well, they can really appreciate it. It's worth a lot more there than 25 cents in a garage sale. And then we get to paperwork and now you're getting to my area. I don't know about your house, but we've had too much paper coming at us for the last number of years and it's hard to keep up. We have people and friends, clients that have three, four, five different bank accounts, different institutions, different RSPs, and it's all over. And you start getting the paper coming at you. It's even worse today because that's all coming electronically. So now we've got tons of this stuff in memory somewhere and it's hard to keep track of it going forward. So always remember, try to consolidate, try to keep things simple going forward. Under the ATA programs, as Dan suggested, we've had this in place now for over 35 years. So our group RSP, the tax free savings account, the RIF, are all consolidated under one basket for you. We have a basket of over 17 companies involved, centralized administration, the record keeping is all done by Capital Province wide. And we have consolidated statements from our pension company that administers that they're second to none. And so I used to use the phrase, keep it simple, stupid. And that's the same thing here. Try to simplify things. As we get older, it sort of gets harder and harder to keep track of all this stuff. So do it while we have our wits about us going forward. So we're very proud of our, our package and our basket. We have the group RSP in place now. Tax-free savings accounts are available to you. We just introduced a RIF two years ago, which is integrated with the RSP now on a seamless basis. Three months ago, we introduced the group education savings plan. I'll be covering a lot of these a little bit later for you, but I just wanted you to know that because of all of you, because of the size of the ATA and the size of your retired teachers association, we were able to get all the traditional fees eliminated. There's no front end fees, there's no setup charges, there's no redemption, no commission charges. We have 17 world-class companies helping manage and it's been in place for over 35 years. And by the way, we're not married to them. We monitor them twice a year before we report to the ATA. And I can tell you, if they're not doing the job, they're out and somebody else is in. So we have to make sure that it's accountable all the way along going through. Tax-free savings accounts, uh, for many of you, I'm, I'm, I hope most of you have a TFSA, but if you don't, let me quickly explain the difference to you. Most of you are probably past the RSP accumulation stage now, although you can continue contributing to your 71 if you have earned income. So if you have a part-time job or you're substituting or that type of thing, you can still contribute. RSPs are tax deductible and tax sheltered, but you have to pay tax on it when you take it out at the other end. Tax-free savings accounts, on the other hand, are tax sheltered investments. So you want to get growth. That's the whole point in the TFSA. If you put $5,000 in, it grows to 7,500. I can take the 7,500 out and take a Viking river cruise, purchase a vehicle, help out my kids or grandkids, and I can put the whole 7,500 back in the following year. You never lose your growth. And so what a fantastic tool for you to be able to use going forward. And right now it's over $69,000 per person. So as a couple, you're looking at almost $140,000. Next year is going up to 75,000 each. So there's a huge planning opportunity there. We find in our discussions with, with folks around the province that too many people have the money sitting in a daily interest account, sitting in a GIC or a low interest bond. Folks, think bigger. Think with a TFSA, I want growth. And with your ATA programs, we have a whole range of those options available so we can combine something a little conservative and something more aggressive for longer term savings. But TFSA is very important. You can tell I love talking about grandkids. The other thing we have to talk about is grandkids. And but I'm talking to a whole group of retired teachers here today. So I, I'm sure you understand what education is all about. That's, that's been your passion for many years. My kids are okay financially, but my goodness, I can't imagine what my little guys are gonna be paying for tuition in another 15, 20 years. We now have a group RESP set up for all of you. And the nice thing about an RESP is if grandma and grandpa have money sitting in their bank account, earning interest taxable, why wouldn't I put $500 in my grandson's RESP if they get an immediate 20% rate of return? It's a 20% government grant immediately on it. You can go up to three or 4,000 a year if you want to. Under the ATA program, we have family programs available. So what happens then is that you have all the kids named under the same contract. So if one brother wants to get buried and buy a home, we can move assets across to him and move the investment growth and the grants across to his, his sister for going to college or Nate or Sate. So the whole thing with this is that 
It's always been paperwork, paperwork. Well, this is our first foray. This is one of the very first group RESPs in the country. We were honored to be introducing it and it's all online. And so it's fantastic. You can just simply go in on an online basis, fill in names and addresses, and it's done automatically for you. And of course, we're there to help going forward, but we'll spend a lot more time on it. But I just think, don't give toys at Christmas, everybody. Give your grandkids something they can really work with. If you remember no other slides today, everybody, please remember this one. Diversify, diversify, diversify. I don't care whether you have your assets at the bank, a credit union, mutual fund company, group plans, with the ATA. These rules apply to every place you have your money. Diversify by asset class. Never have all your money in one place as far as an asset investment. Diversify by management style and diversify by geographic region. Let me explain those to you. By asset class, this is called a risk reward chart. So if I have my money in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see where you've got money marking GICs there. As I go up the graph a little bit, you get into income and bond funds, and then you get into balanced accounts, which are a combination of bonds and stocks and treasury bills. The very top of the corner is equity funds. So equity funds will give you the highest rate of return, but they also have the most amount of risk. So I want you to blend all of your assets with your TFSA, your RIF, especially for those of you that are retired, RIF really has to belong to this rule because it's something that gives you an idea as to how to diversify going forward. Diversify by management style. P banks have different personalities. CIBC does things different than Royal Bank. Royal Bank's different than Scotiabank. Scotiabank's different than Canada Life or McKenzie or Investors Group. Each of these institutions have their philosophy, their computer systems, the way they do things. I'm an old farmer's kid, I told you that earlier. I want more than one horse pulling my wagon, thank you. So one horse stumbles and trips, the other two are still pulling. So always diversify by management style. The biggest mistake I see most people in my 35 years of working with you is they tend to have all their assets in one place, like one bank, one institution. Nothing wrong with that because they're very strong institutions in Canada, but they have a way of doing things. And so it's good to have different philosophies helping with each one of your assets going forward. So in the ATA group, we have 17 companies. And so we really matched that rule or regulation going forward as well. And of course, the last one is diversify by geographic region. We in Canada think we're the big, the big, the big, the big puddle, but we really aren't everybody. And so if I have 100% of my money in Canada, I have moderate risk and moderate return. But look what happens when I get 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, 40. If you had asked me right at the beginning, what do I want to learn, Randy? Well, what do you want me to tell you? I would tell you that I want you to get the best return and least possible risk. And most of you, if you don't have this kind of a formula in your RIF, you're really selling yourself short. So to get an 80-20 split or a 70-30 split between Canada and the world, you're actually increasing your rate of return and reducing your risk. And isn't that what we all want going forward? The next slide sort of shows this for real because point out Canada for me. <laughs> it's pretty darn hard to see. It is on my screen anyway. It's the bottom one right at the bottom left. We represent less than 2% of the world's economy, everybody. So we've got to bring foreign content into our investments, whether it's TFSAs, RSPs, or for most of you, your RIFs going forward. Cycle of market emotions. Goodness knows we've seen this go through. We watch it on TV every, every three or four months of what's happening. We've just gone through the COVID. And so it's the perfect time to be talking to you about it. Don't get hung up on the cycle of market emotions. Make sure you've got good managers that are running the store for you. For example, in March and April this year, when COVID hit, the markets dropped, but that's the point of maximum opportunity. I'm in line with and talking to most of the fund managers and they were telling me, we're moving money out of money market and, and uh, treasury bills, we're, we're buying stocks. Disneyland's on sale 30% off, Amazon's on sale, World Bank's on sale. Carnival Cruises is on sale. They were buying at that point, knowing full well that in another couple of months it was gonna bounce back again. So don't be the kind of person who wakes up at night saying, oh my God, what, I, what, what should I do now? I'm, I'm afraid to watch the news. That's what you have professionals to do to help you going forward regardless of where they are. I met with the president of McKinsey Financial several years ago and he provided me with this chart. And boy, does this ever give you a good idea. It's the last 50 years, Look at the ups and the downs. I can show you where the Sputnik was launched, where Kennedy was assassinated, the World Trade Center went down, subprime mortgage crisis. So you can see the drops, you know, 20, 30, sometimes 
percent when, when, the, when the towers are down in New York. But look how short a time period it lasted for, like six, eight, nine months. But then the market comes back and look at the, not months, but years that it's up. And so just be aware that that's life. That's the way tsunamis happen, hurricanes happen. It's always politically related or weather related where these kinds of things go through their cycle. So please folks, don't overreact to the market. That's what you have the managers there to do. And please stay invested. If you have a RIF or if you have an RSP or TFSA, let the professionals do their job. If you put money in 25 years ago and left it there, you can see the fully invested graph. If in March 20th, you said, my God, COVID's getting crazy, take it out for the next 10 days and we'll put it back in the 1st of April. Look at the difference it made. And if you, God forbid, take out two or three months, if you said stay out of the market for April, May, and June, let this all correct, look at the difference it makes. So just stay invested and trust the folks you have working for you. Make sure they're good at what they do, but trust them and don't start playing the game of moving in and out. It's not a wise thing to do. I talked about inflation as part of the house as well. Uh, inflation can wreak havoc for most of us. The top grind is if you have an 8% rate of return on your assets, which is quite achievable nowadays, the next line down, the light blue, is 5%. Look what happens with the gray line at 5% rate of return. We're giving up almost half of our growth to inflation. So what that tells me is you can't have money sitting in GICs and expect it to last for many years because the GIC line is the bottom one, the yellow one at the base. And so you have to think out of the little box, trust people that give you advice and direction, but keep your money invested and let inflation, it's going to happen whether we like it or not, but you have to offset inflation in your investments and that's why you just can't leave it in GICs. So we've covered investments. Uh, Rick's on the chat box. Uh, you can be marking things down on a piece of paper if you want. You can call us later regarding investments and thoughts and questions you might have. We're here to help you. Upcoming next is risks to retirement. Moving money through the hands of time, everybody. Uh, boy, when you're a grandpa and a grandma, this, this picture means a lot. When you get mom and dad involved and the kids involved, I think that it's so important nowadays to start thinking of our, our kids and our families. I call it money in motion. When there's money in motion, most of us as retirees need help and advice. Sometimes we're a little bit out of the, the, the ability of sort of asking all the questions ourselves and you have to have somebody you can go to to get advice and direction. So when there's money in motion in your home, whether it's sale of a farm property, sale of your home, sale of a seasonal property, moving assets around, that's when there's money in motions and that's when we can really help you, give you some advice and direction on how these things work. Here's an example of three things in money in motion that is it's going to affect all of us. Sale of properties. What happens when you sell your house? Where, what do you do with the money? I had a call two days ago from a gentleman I spoke to probably three years ago. He said, Randy, you talked to me once about something called a systematic withdrawal plan. I, our family just sold a seasonal property. I have $100,000. I thought I'd better call you because I remember you talking about it. We have systematic withdrawal plans. I'm going to go in a minute or so for you as to how they work specifically, but they're incredible tools to get tax efficient money from your investments, from your properties into your income and into your groceries. Education plans for grandkids. Just think about the fact that if there's money sitting in your bank account or if you're investing money yourself, please think about your grandkids. You're getting a tax sheltered growth. You're getting savings coming to you. You're getting uh, government grants coming in. It's a 20% rate of return immediately. And you, how can you go wrong? And you can split it between the kids. If the kids don't go to university, grandma, mom and dad can use it. They can go back and get their masters if they want to. If nobody can use it, they can take it back into their RSP. You can't go wrong with education savings plans anymore. And talking to a group of retired teachers, I think this is really going to resonate with you. I think it's really important. And it's so easy to do now. Remember this phrase, everybody, deemed disposition on death, because Revenue Canada understand it very well. 
taxable capital gains on your mutual funds, on your recreational properties, on your rental properties. When you and I kick the bucket, they're there with their hands up because they're looking at the growth and the taxation on the growth. We have some products and services that can make a huge difference in this area for you. So pay attention as we go. I told you I was going to tell you a little bit more about the tax smart withdrawal plan. It's called the T-SWIP. Most people have never heard of this before. Because of all of our exposure to all these companies, these firms are coming to us with these ideas and concepts that to me are so, so important to you and I, but nobody knows how they work. A T-SWIP is a flexible investment tool that provides efficient tax flow. So the gentleman that just called me two days ago sold his seasonal property for $100,000 for his share. He said, Randy, what do I do with it? Put it into a T-SWIP. What's the T-SWIP? A T-SWIP pays you an annual or monthly income but they pay you your own capital back. So if he took $100,000, he could take $8,000 a year for the next 12 years, and it's all return of capital. It's his own money, there's no tax on it. And so what we're doing is we're pushing all the taxes being pushed ahead 10, 12, 15 years. And there's a potential for incredible tax deferred growth in something like that. And the nice thing about it, if I get to the point where I've used my, my money up over the last 10 or 12 years, now it's all growth, it's capital gains growth. And guess what? Capital gains is taxed at half the amount. What a fascinating topic and it's such an incredible tool. So if you're selling your home, if you're selling a piece of property, if you have money sitting in anything that you want to take an income stream out of, this is a very smart thing to do. And we use this a great deal going forward. Family inheritances, we're, we're seeing a huge shift now in money coming from our parents to us and then from us to our kids and grandkids. Is a principal guarantee important to you? We have some amazing tools that can guarantee the principal. So if my friend that called me had $100,000, he puts it into a guaranteed principal product, it's called a SAG fund, and the 100,000 guaranteed, regardless. As it goes up, 110,000, 115,000, it goes click, click, click. And every time it clicks, the guarantee goes up. So the base is 115 then. And at the same time, the base is clicking up, so is the potential income at the other end. We have other products called insured annuities. That, again, I'm throwing terms out to you, but these are things that we can show you and help you with. You can purchase a very special annuity that gives you a much higher income stream from the sale of that home. So much so that we can afford to take one of the ATA group programs and insure the annuity. So here you are taking this income stream for eight, 10, 12, 15 years, you pass away, the insurance comes in, fills up the bucket with tax-free money for your kids and grandkids. So you sort of have your cake and eat it too. So I'm going through this quickly, but if you have questions on these kinds of things, for goodness sake, let us know. We've got lots of information available for you. Threats to savings, everybody. Economic instability, we, we all know what that's all about. Shutdowns, COVID's been an awful year for a lot of companies. You are so fortunate because you've got an index pension you're in a situation where you don't have to worry about groceries. And so economic stability as a pensioner is something that we are very fortunate to have in Canada. Life-changing illnesses, this is the other side of the coin. Heart attacks, strokes, cancer, the big three. Please, everybody, use your assets and enjoy them when you ever help each other. Take the grandkids to Disneyland. Take your dear wife for hubby on a, on a river cruise. When we have each other, it's so special, we take it all for granted long-term care costs. I'm sure many of you have dealt with your own parents in long-term care, I have. I know what my mom went through. She waited two years to get into a care facility. And when she did, it was a significant amount of money and it was a government subsidized place. If we had to get her into a private, it would have tripled in cost. And so be aware of long-term care costs. And if you say to me, I've got money growing, Randy, what do I need it for? I'm gonna be 85 or 90. This is what you need it for, because there's going to be situations where one of you may be in a care facility and the other at home, and, and then all of a sudden grandpa passes away, grandma's run out of money. So understand longevity. Understand that many of us are going to outlive our savings if we're not careful, if you don't get a good rate of return in the earlier years. And of course, becoming a caregiver, we've all dealt with this, and I tell you, we had a, my, my father-in-law went, went through Alzheimer's, and I don't wish it at anybody, but it's, a, it's an awful disease because it sort of, it robs them of their mind when their body's still in good shape. Oftentimes there's more pressure on the caregivers than there is on the person that's suffering from Alzheimer's. And where's the money come from? 
And I think we're going to be in a situation where we have to understand the wheels of life. So the wheels of life go round and round. Remember the song? So we're all well and good at the top rung. When you get to that bottom rung, those bottom two pictures, sometimes it's not a pretty picture. We like to all stay lived at 80 or 95, but by goodness, who's going to be helping us? Who's going to be minding the store when we're 84? And who's going to be feeding us jello? So we have products available that can provide you long-term income. We have investment solutions that can help you provide. The T-SWIP plan provides a whole bunch of income opportunities down the road for you as well. I'm not going to go through costs. These are actually a couple years old. It's even worse now. My mom was paying $1,800 a month in a care facility, and it was going to be over $3,500 a month to get into a private facility. So just be aware that when you're in your later years, when you don't have the ability to earn more money, the costs may very likely go up. A few ladies that are sitting watching this right now, I'm speaking directly to you right now. If you're looking at me and saying, Randy, I don't have to too much attention to this because George looks after all the investments. I caution you because many of you are going to spend eight to 10 years on your own. Us guys tend to pass away earlier than you ladies. Many of you probably spent more years looking after your own mothers than you looked after your own kids. And the same thing's going to happen to you and your children. So ladies, pay attention, know who to call for questions. Just become familiar with where everything is, what the forms are, what has to be done, where you keep everything. I just want you to be more astute and aware of your, the big picture going forward. Another question, you have a will in your life. We all know wills, but the trouble is, is, is your will up to date? Where do you keep it if you're told your kids where it is? Does, you know, does your family know about your enduring power of attorney and personal directives? Have you instructed your lawyer to put those clauses in your will? If you haven't, please be aware of it. We can help you. I'm not a lawyer, but I've looked at thousands of teachers' wills, and I can assure you it's an important thing to be able to talk to your family, tell them where it is, look at beneficiaries. I had a situation two, two, two weeks ago now. A teacher passed away in Southern Alberta. She was divorced for six years. It was a, not a good separation, and so her and her husband weren't speaking. She didn't pay too much attention to this stuff. She passed away from cancer, it happened very quickly. Guess what? Her former spouse was still beneficiary of her pensions and her benefits. It all went to him and he doesn't even get along with his two boys. Two boys, 18 and 21 folks. Guess what? The divorced husband got 150,000 of the RSPs. The two boys have to pay the taxes out of their mom's, mom's estate. A sad situation. So everybody we talk to, we say, check your beneficiaries. Make sure it's all under control. I love Jack Nicholson's movie, The Bucket, The Bucket List. And so I refer to the bucket quite often because it's very meaningful. Look at the bucket. It's all the things we've worked for of our lives, our cash, our property, the things we've built, our assets, our RSPs, TFSAs. When we kick the bucket, everybody, it gets dumped out. And all of a sudden, those two big arrows are Revenue Canada, CRA, taxes, bank loans, mortgages. It's a huge problem for many people. And so make sure that somebody's helping with the bucket so that you can organize it in a way that there's enough cash in reserve to cover the taxes and the kinds of things we can do for you. So that's sort of the risks of retirement. Make some notes, send some things off to Rick if you want any information on any of these things we've talked about. Coming up next is retirement income. That's what we all are interested in because we're doing it right now as we speak. So your retirement income, most of you have probably, your RSPs now are probably turned into RIFs. But for those of you that haven't turned 71 yet and still have RSPs, oftentimes people are using the ATA group program as a collecting pot because there are no fees and charges in it. You can move GICs and things from other institutions, have it all together. You don't want five RIFs, you want a RIF because a RIF is just an RSP bucket with a tap on the bottom. And you can open and close the tap whenever you want to. But the options, everybody tells you what to put in. Nobody tells you how to take it out. So we're here to tell you how to take it out. You can cash it in, least tax efficient, because pay tax all at once. Purchase an annuity. That's what your ATRF is. It's an annuity. You give up control of the capital, but ATRF pays you a steady income stream for the rest of your life 
and in your case, on an index basis, I'd crawl over broken glass for your pension. It's a fantastic plan. The money I'm talking to you about is your lifestyle money, your RSP money is the Viking River Cruise and the Disneyland trips. Our group RIF is one of the best in the marketplace. It's so flexible and we're so proud of it because it made it seamless. You just go from your RSP column to your TFSA column to your RIF column all on the same page. And we try to make it so simple and easy for you going forward. For those of you that haven't reached the RIF age yet, 71, so you have to start December of the year you turn 71, you have to start taking 7% of your RIF out. And from that point on, it increases gradually each and every year. We're very proud of the ATA group program. We worked hard for it to get it in place for you. It's a big job, but the bottom line is, we're so pleased with the way it turned out. You have better control of your money, more freedom, greater flexibility, and be aware everybody, if you have a RIF that you're not happy with, it's a single, single form, you just sign a form, send it to us, we'll transfer your other RIF to your ATA RIF. So now it's accountable, you've got multiple companies available to you, and I can assure you that you won't get a better RIF. We have got one of the best companies in the world, one of the top five companies in the world manages your RIF. I have never seen a company so well organized. These people have 27 offices around the world doing research. And so I call it the glide path. And so if your RIF isn't like this, look at this carefully, folks, because in the accumulation years and the transition years, we're looking at the bottom lines are probably all the equity funds and things that are giving you the most growth. But look what happens when you get into the income years. Automatically, when I turn 70, 75, 80, 85, it gets automatically more conservative. I had a lady in our office the other day, she was 92, she said, Randy, we just have to talk. I'm so worried about my money. I said, Gloria, don't worry about your money. You're in a glide path. Your money is mostly sitting in GICs and, and money market right now because of your age. So I just want you to know that I may not be here in 20 years to give you some advice, but the advice I'm gonna give you right now is make darn sure your RIF is in a glide path approach because you don't have to worry about it. It's set up on an automatic basis and is accountable to your association and we're reporting on a regular basis. The glide path is a wonderful factor. So we've talked about retirement income. I hope I haven't totally thrown you off guard. We covered a lot of stuff in that last session. So again, time to ask a chat question. Um, and while, while I'm here right now, I have to tell you, you don't realize how lucky you are to have some of the people that are sitting on my screen. Your, your art of program your, is fantastic and you've got people that are there to help you. And so they're bringing all these presentations to you. They've engaged us to assist you as well. They've got lots of folks and give you assistance. You don't know how fortunate you are to have the ATA and ARTA to provide help and guidance and they've all been where you are. So you know what it's all about. Randy? Yes. Yeah, maybe one question, and you might be covering this a little further on, but one that came up there that might be worth just bringing up live. Uh, there is a question, is there a way of getting around the paying of taxes on capital gains on the transfer of a seasonal property to my son? Oh boy, yes. I'm coming right up next, planned giving. Okay. I, I'm gonna go through that in a great deal of detail. Thank you for asking that question because Remember I talked about deemed disposition and all the things. It's not just seasonal property. It's your RSPs. It's all these things that we've accumulated over our lives cause capital gains issues. So I have a great solution for you, whoever answered that question. So let, let's move into it. Planned giving. Here's the same grandpa, but now he's seeing some financial independence. He wants to leave a family legacy. And grandma and grandpa want to leave the world a better place than they found it. Isn't that what we all want, everybody? We just want to be able to be in a position where we can assist our kids and grandkids, help our families, and leave the world better off than what we found it. And goodness knows that's a little bit of a struggle nowadays. I, I hate watching the news, to be honest, but you know, when you, when you work with Doctors Without Borders and some of these wonderful organizations, the Salvation Army, there's a lot of people out there that really need our help, everybody. And so let's talk about planned giving because it doesn't apply to everybody. If your total pension income is being used for groceries, this may not be for you. But if you have extra money, if you have property, if you have additional investments, I think we're gonna have some ideas here for you that may just sort of uh, open your eyes up a little bit. This is a RIF or an RSP with no planning. 
I would say 90% of the people we talk to, this is what it's going to look like because they don't understand the problem and nobody's ever explained it to them. So if I have $250,000 in my RSP or in my seasonal property or a combination of the two, if I pass away, that asset can go to my spouse. But the day my, my wife may passes away or if we were killed together, God forbid, the whole thing, the bucket gets dumped all at once. And CRA can hardly wait for that to happen because look what, it all comes in in one year. And so out of the 250,000, 117 of taxes immediately. That's what happens when we don't do any planning, when we don't look for, for help and advice going forward. And the problem I see here is that people who get advice are generally wealthier people who can afford a tax attorney or a tax accountant. We at Capital, Rick and I are on a mission to talk about this to every retired teacher we talk to. I don't care whether you have 50,000 or 500,000, the same thing applies. And so you have to be in a situation to say, this makes sense to me, Randy, show me how to do it. Revenue Canada changed the rules. The government changed the rules regarding charities several years ago. And for those of you that don't understand this, we all give to the United Way, we all give to Salvation Army, we tried to help Meals on Wheels, and all the things we try to do on an annual basis. But when we pass away, that's when the big tax bill hits. That's when the rubber hits the road. So now the government allows us to have a charitable donation equal to 100% of our income, taxable income, the year we die. What's the problem? We have, we're asset rich but cash poor. It's all tied up in properties and pensions and TVs and cars. And so you realize very quickly, where does the, where does the cash come from? And I'll use myself as an example. We paid 20000 for a little lake cabin 30 years ago. It's on a lake. It's close to Edmonton. It's worth a lot more money today. And all of a sudden, I have a tax problem. Pick a number. Say it's $300,000. I paid twenty. I have a $280,000 gain in that property. What if I died in January? Can my kids sell it in January and get the best price for it? No. And so this 100% taxable income donation availability is is great but how are we going to finance it so that's when you start bringing in products through your ATA programs we have a whole range of products for insurances through your ATA group programs so we can utilize your existing insurance now where you can set up new coverages we have plans right through to age 100 we can set up joint second to die plans and I'll explain to you how those are important to you because it brings in a tax-free death benefit into the estate when the cash is needed the most, when we dump the bucket out. And so be aware of these things. So many of you have insurance you've had for many, many years. Let me give you some examples. Over our lifetime, the red line, we had mortgage insurance. We had insurance when the kids were growing up, when they're going to university. And then we started to see the red line drop off. I don't need it. I've had so many people say to me, Randy, I don't need it anymore. I'm, I'm retired. My kids are all looking after themselves. But look at the blue line. Look at my assets growing. Look at the, the, my cabin going up, my RSP growing. I'm building this tax problem at the same time I'm losing all my insurance. So all I'm saying to you is that that's where we really specialize. That little dotted line along the bottom there really shows you maybe at some point you should stabilize the insurance because it's going to make a big difference for you as you go through the line. You may not realize this yet, everybody. Uh, I can almost guarantee you many of you have a tax problem. It's going to be a deemed disposition problem on your state. Investments, your mutual funds, your RSPs, your properties, your rental properties, your, your collections, your jewelry collection, your art collection, all this stuff that we work for and enjoy all of a sudden gets dumped out of the bucket at the same time. So just be aware of that. So now I'm getting to answer that gentleman's question. Here's what we do at Capital. This is how we connect we set up something called a legacy fund for you. And so you, you structure an individual, you take your own policies you already have in place, we'll help you work with it. You can switch it to a joint second to die. If you're a single person, it's an individual plan. If you're married or with a spouse, we set up a joint second. Because remember I mentioned to you, if something happens to me, the cabin and my RSPs go to my wife. The taxes don't hit the road until she passes away. So joint sex to die is a brilliant concept and we use it a lot because when I insure a husband and wife, one of them is probably in better health than the other. 
And so, and you, you ladies outlive us guys. So as soon as I bring you into the picture, the cost drops by almost a third because you're gonna live longer than your husband. So here it is. So joint last to die coverage is available. We put noted in your will, help clauses in your will with your lawyer. On death, the 250,000 comes into your estate. Because it's a tax deductible through the will, you've donated it to the Cancer Society. What ends up happening is there's a tax credit comes back, which totally offsets the tax on the RSP or the, or the, or the recreational property. So the tax credit offsets it. So what have I just done? My taxable assets now are zero because I've offset the tax. $250,000 goes to my kids and grandkids. I've reduced my taxes to zero and I've left a significant amount of money to a charity that I couldn't afford to do any other way. Folks, that's called retirement planning. And that's what tax attorneys show wealthier people. That's what they're doing. But it's available to you and I now, and we've got this down to a point where we can do it very easily for you. So in the end, your grandkids get the assets, the charity gets a significant help, and reduce your income tax substantially. Just to get you thinking about this, I know it's overwhelming at the beginning, but we have lots of support material, lots of explanation material. Lisa's asked us to do an article on this in one of the upcoming uh, magazines coming out to you so you have more information going forward. So that's how the legacy fund works. The question that hasn't come in on chat, Rick, is what happens if I live to 90, 95? What if, what if the money's all gone? And my question then, or my point is, that's the best advantage of all. Oh, let's check your rate bounces. <laughs> Spend it while you have your house and each other, everybody. Because if there's no tax payable, there's no need for the charitable donation. But guess what? The insurance money comes in anyway. So if I live too long, my kids get the tax-free insurance. If I die too soon, the kids get my tax-free possessions, my RSP money I haven't spent yet. Doesn't that make sense? And so I know it's hard to sort of get this through, but I, I tell you, this is a very powerful tool. I don't care if you have 50,000 or 100,000 or 250,000, the concept works very effectively for you going forward. Hope that answers your question, whoever asked it. So now let's take you to the next plateau. Remember I mentioned that the RSP can go to the Cancer Society or to the foundation through WARTA. You guys have a fantastic foundation set up. The ATA has their ATA trust. There's all these organizations that are designed to help you. So what you can do is instead of just saying, okay, that 250,000 is gonna to go to the Cancer Society, to the Stollery Children's Hospital or, the, or the, the cancer clinic, why don't we take it to the next level and say, why don't we establish a foundation? And so because of all of you, we have the volume now that we've been able to set it up with one of the major investment companies. They set up the family foundations. They do all the structure, all the, there are no tax bills payable. There's no accountants fees and legal fees. I can set up the Evans Family Foundation just like that. And so what ends up happening, instead of having that 250,000 go to the Cancer Society or the Arta Foundation, it goes to the Evans Family or the Olson Family or the Lowry family, family foundation. And so the family foundation, you can have your retirement investments, your, your family property can all be passed down. You can choose the charities or a group of charities you want, but instead of just leaving one deposit in the year you pass away, you leave an income stream for eternity. And so all those years in the future, the Evans Family Foundation has investment growth. You can deposit future money into it if you wish to. It's all deductible as you go through it. And it lives on as a family foundation. In my case, I've got both my daughters named as directors. And I just did this myself, everybody. And I'm, the peace of mind that comes with this is unbelievable. Knowing that I've left things in order and knowing that my girls are able to monitor my foundation or our, our foundation for as many years as they're able to, because it's going to go to my grandkids are going to be the directors in years to come. And the life income that I have earned and invested and worked for is now distributed back in our foundation name for eternity. It's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, but we've simplified it for you. And so if you're in a position where you have assets, you're thinking, Randy, if you ever watch PBS, just watch the scroll that comes through of family foundations and family endowment funds that are set up, and now it's available to any one of us. 
simply because it's structured and it's a tool that we can use for you. So I, I'm sure I've really thrown a lot of you for an extra loop. <laughs> Legacies always bring up a lot of questions and answers. So we're more than happy to assist and help before I wrap up. Any questions that have come up, Rick? Or? Yeah, you've got a, a couple or any one that came up quite early on, but I was just kind of saving it till this piece. There is a question about uh, at what point should they consider establishing a trust? So I think they're talking about kind of what age or what stage should they look at doing that? That is a great question. <laughs> the sooner the better. Don't leave it till you're sick or ill or pass away because it's the trust has to be in place. I just did mine. And so I can explain it to you. The company has done it for us, asked for us $10,000 seed money. So they said, we can't set up a trust unless there's something there. So I put $10,000 in, my trust is established. I set up where the money's going and that's all that's there. At my death, the insurance money that we set up on the joint second to die comes into the trust at death it's already there, it's already set up. It's a very seamless flow. I can continue contributing money to our family, the Olson Family Foundation over the next number of years. It's, I can't put money into RSPs anymore, so I can put money into my own foundation and get a tax deduction. So I put another couple thousand dollars in front of another $5,000 and get a tax deduction just like we used to. So instead of just going to an individual charity, it's going into our family foundation, it's gonna spread it out to multiple charities for a long, long time into the future. Um, okay, and uh, just to plug, the uh, the ARTA Charitable Foundation could be one of those recipients of- You better believe it, I think. Family Foundation I, too. The ARTA Foundation, for those of you who don't know, does so much good, I and mean, one of your board of directors could explain it better than I do, but I, I've met with them, I know what they're doing. And that money is going to so many good causes, everybody. And what a wonderful legacy for your for a retired teachers group to leave, leaving the world a better place and doing things. So anything you can do to help them in, in, in your situation, I'd suggest maybe maybe half the money go to something like the Stollery or to the Cancer Foundation. You could have three different charities, but always make sure that you've got your Art of Foundation as one of them, because to me, that's where the rubber really hits the road. You know who's allocating the money out. You know it's going to a good cause. And when I said earlier, when you're 84, who's minding the store? I can tell you, your board is going to be on a continuous basis going forward. And I'm so proud of all of them that they've initiated these kinds of education sessions for you because in 10 years time, folks, most of you aren't going to be in the board. I look at that Leo Richter guy, he's not getting any younger. And so what's happening is that you're going to have new people coming onto your board. They're going to continue the tradition and continue what you started at this board level. So it's a huge opportunity. In the next four or five years, folks, there's a tsunami of planned giving going to be happening. And you're just on the cusp of it right now. And between the foundation and the legacy fund, I think we can make a huge difference to our charities going forward and leave more money to our families and have more money to spend as we're enjoying our retirement. Does that answer your question? Any more, Rick? Okay, so uh, we've got a couple other ones that are kind of related to this. Uh, one of them was minimum net worth to consider setting up a family foundation and what costs are involved. Well, I, first of all, there are no costs because we've got the, the, the pension company is doing it, has waived all the fees if the money's invested with them. So that's our commitment to them is if I put my $10,000, that's the only cost basically, Rick, is that I have to put money in to set up the foundation. I wouldn't leave it until I'm on my deathbed because it's not going to happen then. So I want it all structured ahead of time. So there is a, a cost to your estate. You have to put $10,000 in, but it's a tax deductible charitable donation. So it's really not a cost. You just have to reallocate the funds. So. Uh, we can do it after death, but I would I wouldn't do that to my family. I uh, it's there's too much else, too much emotion going on, and it's too difficult. I'd like to get these things structured ahead of time. Uh, you you could do it if you have the assets available. Do it when you're 40 or 50, <clears throat> because you're allowed, even though you're in your 40s and 50s and still contributing and still earning an income. What's we'll stopping you from putting a thousand or two thousand dollars into your family foundation, letting it grow? It's all tax sheltered growth at that point in time. So. There's never too early a time 
my own daughter, when we set up our family legacy fund, I did that several years ago. And when we set that up, I sat down with both my girls and said, here's what mom and I are doing. Because I practiced my own rule about, you know, tell the kids what you're doing. My daughter looked at me and she said, dad, I'm still single. I have $20,000 in my RSP. Why would I give five or 10,000 to Revenue Canada? I'd much rather go to the women's shelter in Sherwood Park or Edmonton. I said, yes, Kathy, you got it. That's the seat. And so once you get your kids understanding, that's how you pay it forward, everybody. Explain to your kids what you did, and then they'll do it for their kids. And now we've started this pay it forward program as you go. So to be clear, I'd say found, uh, the, the legacy gift structuring up with the insurance can be done 40, 50 years of age. I suggest, Rick, that um, foundations generally happen that people start thinking about this with the group I'm talking to you right now. They, they realize that they're secure in their family. They understand they're, they've got grocery money. They're not having to worry about income coming forward. Now they're talking about tax planning. And so our, our biggest amount of questions come from people 65 plus. But I wish I had started mine five, 10 years ago. Because there's, there's, there's no disadvantage to having the foundation earlier. Just changing gears a little bit, there was a question earlier on at, uh, saying, I recently turned 65, but I've been informed by Service Canada that I can't get the OAS because of my income. Can you speak about this? Oh boy, can I ever. <laughs> That's where they really get us because what's happening now is, is that they take all your income. And it, if you exceed, once you get to $70,000 and it starts going up, they start climbing back your OAS. So all that earned income is, can be clawed back. And so what happens is when you get up over $100,000, if you have investment income, another property, rental income, that type of thing, you can lose all of your old age security. Remember about 20 slides ago, we talked about T-SWIPs? T-SWIP return of capital doesn't affect old age security. And so if I, sold, if I sold the farm, if I sold a piece of property, I could put it into my T-SWIP in my 50s or 60s, let it grow. And when I start to need the income in addition to my ATRF pension check, I can start drawing my own capital back out of the T-SWIP. Zero impact on old age security. A fantastic tool, you guys. And I'm surprised how many people don't even know about it. And so we've really perfected this now. And I think uh, it's something a lot of you can get some use out of. Any other questions, Rick? Those haven't been very hard at all. Okay, let's see. Uh, what can we... Uh, <laughs> I, I think we're pretty good. We're, we're coming up on time now. I've been answering a few in the chat. So okay. uh, why don't we move on there, Randy? Darn, I was hoping to say all the difficult questions could be answered by Rick and let him deal with it. <laughs> so let, let, let's wrap up, everybody. I just wanted to... I know we're getting close to our time. I'm, I'm going to be careful with the time we're spending with you. It's been like a drink of water out of a fire hose this morning. And for that, I apologize. But really, I don't apologize because that's why you're on the line. That's why your committee asked us to do this, to raise all these questions for you. And so I've talked about will planning, power of attorneys, long-term care, planned giving. I, we, we've filled up your bucket with ideas and suggestions. I just want you to know we're here to help. The ticker's not running. Contact your ARTA board. They know how to get a hold of us. Send us, I'll give you some email information later that you can contact us directly. We're here to help everybody. And that's the whole point of what this is all about. We're here for teachers. This form's available as well. Uh, our, our, our design staff person in the office, uh, Elizabeth did this, and I think it's fantastic. This really summarizes for all of you. If you're saying, how can Capital connect with ATM members, staff and retired teachers here it is, everybody. All you do is print this off and circle the ones you need help with. Vesting your retirement, your RSPs, your TFS, your RIFs. We've got a fantastic group program available for you. Tax sheltered investments. I talked about the, the T-SWIP plan. Your pensions. We work with teachers. We understand your pension very, very well. Most More so than a lot of the banks do. And so I understand how your pension works. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't. And we've seen in the last number of years, a lot of people were talked into moving their ATR pension to a private investment company. That won't happen on my watch. It won't happen on Rick's watch because that's the last thing you want to do. 
We can show you how to protect your assets, disability, income protection, insurance through the ETA program. So we have critical illness insurance set up, heart, stroke, and cancer coverage. Now, I haven't even addressed that today, but most of you are past the stage where you might want to look at that, but your, your kids, your, your adult kids, uh, teachers, family, heart, stroke, and cancer coverage pays a lump sum benefit 30 days after diagnosis. I had a 35-year-old teacher with breast cancer. She called me and said, Randy, I met you at a teacher's convention a couple years ago. You set up this CI coverage for me. She says, I was just diagnosed with breast cancer. I have a seven-year-old son and I'm single. She says, my life was over. I was devastated. 30 days after I left the office crying, a $50,000 check arrived. And I was able to pay my mortgage, stay at home and look after my son and get better. She says, thank you. I said, you don't have to say thank you. That's what it's there for. We can help you in your retirement, with taxation issues, the T-SWIP plans, the, the insured annuities, uh, setting up the RIF for you, long-term care, estate planning. I'm not a lawyer, Rick's not a lawyer, but we have lawyers that we work with. Arta has lawyers that you can work with as well. And so to discuss your wills, talk about your heirs, check your beneficiaries, where we can really help everybody is plan giving strategies, tax reduction strategies, because in my mind, that's the, the biggest issue we all have going forward. So we've just touched the tip of the iceberg, you guys. <laughs> it's like there's so much more we could talk about. We, we could do several of these. I'd love to come back, Lisa, because this kind of thing I think is important to everybody. But you realize when you get into these kinds of conversations, there's so much below the waterline. And so we're here to help, to help you through all of this uh, between your board and articles and things that we can do on, on going, going forward. Don't get overwhelmed by it because we can assist going forward if, if need be. One of the forms that we have available to you that I think is so important is where is everything? We distribute this wholesale to everybody because it's, I think it's so important. Please sit down with your family, sit down with your spouse, make a list of who's your advisor, where's your bank account, who's looking after things, who's your doctor, where do you keep your extra car keys, where's the extra house keys? Where's your marriage certificate located? Flip the page over. Have I done my will? Is it updated? What's the last date? Where's my passcode to my iPhone? Where's the passcode to your Facebook account? Most people don't think to share that with their spouse. But when something happens, nobody can get into your iPhone. They can't get into your Facebook account. But trust me, the bad guys can. And so share that kind of stuff. That form is for you to keep in your family, but tell the kids where it is, for goodness sake. That's what it's all about. Go onto our website, Capital Planning CA Resources. Um, all the things we're talking about are there. Call us, we can direct you, we can send it to you personally. But if you're computer literate at all, all the stuff is available to you online as well. And, and hopefully that helps you going forward. So I guess just in closing, I'm consistent time here. I'll leave this up for a little while. There's our office phone number. We have an 800 number as well, 800-661-8755. Call us, send us an email. Rick and I are available. We've got fantastic staff here that'll jump to the pump to help you in any way we possibly can. And uh, my apologies for the drink water of the fire hose. <laughs> We've covered a lot today, you guys, but I, I hope it helped. I hope some of the things we talked about resonated with you. And uh, like I say, we're here at your service. Okay, well, thanks very much, Randy and Rick. We, we truly appreciated and enjoyed the presentation today. Um, just letting all of our participants know at this point in time that we are doing a giveaway for today's attendees. There'll be two winners. If you'd like to enter, please send an email to contest at arda.net. Provide your name, phone number, and the date of the session that you attended. Uh, just once again, wanted to say thank you to Randy and Rick for the, for the wealth of information. And uh, we look forward to having many presentations with you in the future. Fantastic. And you, you guys keep up the good work too, Scott. This is a, it's your initiative that started all this. So I think it's a very valuable thing you're doing for all your members. Okay. Thank you very much again.